Oi pessoal, tudo bem? Eu sou o Vitor Delboni, eu sou coordenador aqui no Instituto Arte de Cultura, do Educativo e das Exposições, e hoje a gente vai bater um papo com Joe Delute II, ele é make-up designer, ele é designer de maquiagens, fez vários espetáculos da Broadway, como Wicked, por exemplo, que já veio para o Brasil. Tudo nela me dá ódio. O nariz, a voz, que ódio, quer saber, é um horror. And tell me, where did you graduate and when did your career started? When did you get this interest for makeup? Well, I am a self-taught makeup artist. I never went to school for it. Um, I uh, went to college, university for graphic design, and I never graduated. I didn't have the money to finish, and I didn't want to go into debt, so I just stopped going. Um, and but I loved like old monster movies, like Dracula and Frankenstein, and and I loved that. And Halloween is my favorite holiday, so every Halloween I would be doing crazy makeup on myself. And when my nieces got older, I started doing makeup on them. And I did theater most of my life. I acted all the way through college. And then in college, I started doing a lot of backstage technical work. Um, so did some makeup design there, but it was really the costume designer's idea of what the makeup design was going to be. And I sort of designed it. Um, and then when I moved to New York, um, I decided I was going to be a makeup artist. And at that time, nobody really wanted to be a makeup artist. It wasn't like now where everybody's a makeup artist. Mm -hmm. And so I got a job. I would I was working in a rock and roll punk rock clothing store on uh, St. Mark's in New York. And I would wear makeup into work and photographers and stylists would come in and say, oh, are you a makeup artist? And I would say, yes, I am. And <laughs> so they, they'd be like, wait, great. You want to do a photo shoot? For, for in exchange for photos. And I was like, yes, because that's a way for me to build up my book. And so I would do it and just pretend like I knew what I was doing. And because I had theater background, I understood lighting, you know, I understood contour and highlighting. I knew all of that. So, and I was an artist, so I knew how to draw. And, and, and so, you know, it, it sort of came naturally to me. And then, and then eventually I got a job working for Mac Cosmetics and, and, learned more from watching the people that I worked with. And then it kind of all sort of, I started doing film, not film, uh, television. I was doing editorial, um, you know, that kind of stuff and body painting and fashion shows. And, and, uh, and then eventually was in the right place at the right time and started doing theater. And uh, what was your first uh, big, gig like was it a broadway show was it tv or for magazine Do you um, remember the big one i think my first probably my first big gig would have been wicked would would have been designing wicked i did i did like a cover of rolling stone but i it was the millennial issue and i did like one person on this cover of like 50 people so it's not really that you know and i wasn't paid or anything um, you know, and I did some great fashion shows and things like that, but I think that Wicked would have to be the first big thing that I did. And uh, who called you to, to work on Wicked and how was this, this, this process for you? So it was the costume designer, Susan Hilferty. And what had happened was I had moved out to LA because I wanted to do more film and television. And I was back in New York and I was doing some of the hosts of the Style Network for Fashion Week. And my friend Kate Best, who is Vanessa Williams' makeup artist called and said, I'm doing Into the Woods with Vanessa and I need to take two shows off. Can you come in and, and do the shows for me? So I went in, I learned the show, met Vanessa, and then the two shows turned into eight shows. <laughs> and then I went, flew back to LA. And then the next week she called and said, can you come and do another week? Because I need to take a week off. So she flew me back to New York. I worked for a week. I went back to LA. And then the following week she called me and said, do you want to come and take over for me? Because I just, I don't want to do this anymore. And she's a celebrity makeup artist and editorial. She doesn't want to be working eight shows a week in a theater. Uh -huh. So I 
packed everything up and moved back cross country in the same year. It was the same year that I had moved out to LA. So Susan Hilfrey was costume designer for Into the Woods and I had met her and then I found out she was gonna be designing Wicked. And I had read the book and I loved the book. And so I said to her, I would love to, um, I would love to work on the show, meaning doing the, just doing the makeup for it, not design, I never even thought about designing it. I just thought, oh, I'll just work full time and, and do the makeup on the show. And it was a few months later and I got a call from her office um, asking me to come in to interview to design it. And I, didn't know. I was like, okay, um, I don't have a book anymore. I don't, you know, because it had been so long since I did like print work. So it's like, I don't have a book. She's like, that's fine. Just throw a whole bunch of pictures together. Just bring a whole bunch of pictures of your work and we'll just sit down and talk. And, and she interviewed me and we talked about the show. She showed me her costume designs, what her influences were. And we talked about ideas of what it could be. And Joe Mantello, the director, didn't want a theater makeup designer to do the show because he didn't want the show to look like a stereotypical musical, uh, theater mm -hmm. musical. He, he wanted someone that had an editorial background so that they could bring that into it. And then I got hired. And how, how do you receive the information? For example, in Wicked, you know there is a green witch. Mm -hmm. And how do, how do you think the process, because her makeup changes, from the beginning of the show until she's the Wicked Witch of the West. Mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you design the, this process? How do you evolve the makeup within the show? Well, usually it starts off the, the way that, that it works all the time is you see the costume sketches that the costume designer has done. And you talk with them and sort of get the idea of what the feel of the show is. With Wicked, it was pretty much open because it's this world, the new world that we were creating. And it could have gone anywhere. Like there was no, there were no restrictions on me as to what it could be. We both agreed that, you know, Alphaba should be pretty. You know, we wanted it to be that she really was pretty. It's just that people didn't like her because of her skin color, because she was different. So then it was just a matter of me um, experimenting with different products and different applications. You know, we tried airbrushing and that was good. But then again, we're doing eight shows a week and to airbrush someone eight shows a week where they can't wear a mask, they're gonna, they're singing and they're gonna be inhaling all of this makeup while we're doing it. Also, it's green. It's not found, it's not a regular foundation that blends into your skin. So you'd be sitting there for going like this for a really long time. And if someone had to go in in the middle of the show, that wouldn't have worked. So it was just sort of like a trial and error and figuring out what worked and what didn't work. And, and then going from there and then actually doing a, a test of it. And with Wicked, with Alphaba, it was also lighting test because her spotlight is tinted green um, mm. so that it doesn't take away from the color, but actually enhances it. And so I sat with the lighting designer and he went through all of these different tones of green until we uh, mutually agreed upon one that looked the best. But I remember when we were in Sao Paulo doing it, lighting is different down there so mm -hmm. than what we have. So we actually had to go through the whole process again because what was down there and the, the strength of the light and everything was much different than what we had. So we couldn't do the same thing. Um, so we had to sit through and, and find the right green again for it. And how is the process of uh, bringing a show to another country, for example, uh, to Brazil? You came here, you spent uh, a few weeks, and did you teach someone to do it? Did you have workshops? How did you, you, you pass on your knowledge for doing so? On Wicked, I think on every company of Wicked, there is a, a makeup person, at least one makeup person. Depending on the country, sometimes there's a team that do hair and makeup together. So sometimes there's multiple people doing makeups, just depending on the tracks. Um, so I had, a, I had a makeup person there. Um, and, um, and so I was teaching her, but also teaching the actors as well. So, you know, teaching her the makeup that she was going to have to do in the show, 
But then she would also sit in while I taught all the actors that were going to be doing their own makeups, you know, what they had to do. And then also taught her, you know, how to paint, um, you know, the prosthetic heads, how to do the upkeep of like the monkeys and Dr. Dillamond and the midwife, those things. And so, you know, the first foreign company we did was London. Um, so, you know, it was easier because there wasn't a language barrier there. Unlike Sao Paulo, where I just, I can't pick up, por I try and I listen and I just can't seem to pick up the Portuguese at all. Um, but it was fine. I mean, I, it was an easy, you know, we had a, an easy time of it, but it's, it's interesting now to go to different countries and see different styles of work and not that anybody is lazy or doesn't do the work. It's just that, you know, in, a, in the U S we're so used to like, go, 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 go. Like everything has to be done fast. And you, you sometimes see in other countries where it's a little bit more laid back and a little bit calmer and and so which is kind of how I am so I I really enjoy that so in your experience what is the key to working alongside with a good team like you you work with so many different teams from so many countries what do you think the key is to work a good, to do a good job with the well, team I, I love collaboration so I love working with other people because sometimes other people can give you an idea that you didn't have and, or they'll say something that sparks something in you that sparks some creativity in you. So I love working in teams. Um, but I think, you know, having headed up so many teams and being a man, having been a manager at Mac and, um, you know, heads of department and things like that. Like one of the things is you have to be able to listen. So you have to be able to listen to the team and if there are concerns or, questions or they're not understanding something, you have to be willing to, to listen to them and be open to that. Um, and you have to be a good communicator because especially when you're dealing with another language, like when I've taught in Sao Paulo, I've had an interpreter, you know, interpreting for me, but I have to understand the way that I'm saying things is, is not necessarily the way that it's going to be interpreted. So then I have to think about how do I say it so that it can be interpreted correctly. Uh, are there any shows that you worked on that wasn't as creative as Wicked? There, there are a lot that I've done that that aren't quite as as creative or technical. You know, I've done a lot of um, like old school musicals. Um, So like Holiday Inn, so like 1940s musicals. Like I now have face charts that are scanned into my computer that I now can just take and fill in the different names and different products. Because if I do another 1940s musical, I'm not going to do a whole bunch of new face charts because I could just use the same ones I've used in every other show because it's, there's nothing different about it. You know, there may be like some color changes or things like that, but other than that, the, the style is basically the same. So, you know, but luckily in my career, I've also got to do things like Wicked and Beetlejuice and SpongeBob, you know, and, and Jesus Christ Superstar for NBC, like those things. I've been able to be like really creative with them and, and really create the worlds from my own head. How was it for you to, to create Beetlejuice? Did you, did you take the movie as an example or did you just create it from scratch? Uh, when we came into this project, they were very, very highly influenced by um, Tim Burton's sketches. So that's what most of our inspiration came from was the sketches. Now, I'm a huge fan of Beetlejuice, the movie, and I know V. Neal, who... who was the makeup department head who did designed all that makeup for the movie. Um, you know, and of course you can't not think about those things when you're, when you're doing, it. I try not to look at pictures, but I know it so well. So it's in my head. Um, but I tried to base it off of the sketches and, and then my own creativity. And this was the first time that I've had a director who, wanted to go far, 
who wanted all of these makeups. Like I'm so used to like thinking, okay, so they got to be this. So how do we build up their makeup and then make it easy for them to switch into things and then take off, maybe take off a lipstick or something and then change that. But this was like, they, he wanted like this makeup for the beginning. He wanted a whole new makeup right after that. Like they go from being like normal-ish, like mourners to being, um, demon cheerleaders and in, in, in a drum line with pointy with prosthetic pointy ears so who are green so we had to figure that out and then they have to go back into being human again so it was it was a challenge but a really great challenge to be able to you know kind of take all of this i always have stuff going on in my head um so it was it's great to be able to like be able to put it down on paper and to have a director who says I want you to go far, and if it goes too far, we'll just pull it back. But I want you to go there. When when do you think you're done with the show? Like, do you teach everybody, and do they like are they are on their own, and then you you go away, and then you come back, or do you keep going every day? How is how is this process after the show is is on? Well, when we're setting up the show, I'm usually there for two or three weeks. There during tech, teaching everybody. And I usually stay through the first or the second preview. Um, and so once that's done, usually the show is, we know makeup wise that the show is probably gonna be pretty much set. Um, if we did it, if we felt like there were gonna be a lot of changes, then I might stay a little bit longer. And uh, other than musicals, what else have you done? Like you, you told me you've done like TV shows or movies. Yeah, I, uh, I've done some film and TV. Um, I did TV a bunch. I did a lot of stuff for the E! Entertainment Network way back in the day. Um, and Style Network, which doesn't exist anymore. Um, did something for Lifetime. I did some commercials. Um, and, but recently I, I live in Massachusetts now and, and the film and TV industry here is huge because there's really great tax benefits for them. So there's so many films and, and television shows that come up here. And so I've been able to, to work on, on a bunch of things since I've moved up here. Like I work on ghost, the new Ghostbusters, um, and central intelligence and Manchester by the sea, um, and uh, the first season of Nosferatu and, but like usually I just come in and they, they have like a lot of uh, background that day and they'll hire extra artists to come in. And I kind of love it. You go in, you get told what the look is, you do it, you're there, you make some good money and then you go. And do you have any shows like uh, theater coming up? Uh, I'm going to be designing a show called K-pop um, next year it's coming out. Um, I think it does it's out of town in like February or March, and then it'll come to Broadway after that. So at some point, once it gets a theater, but it's basically a, a K-pop musical. Um, so, which I'm really excited about doing because I love me some K-pop. So, um, yeah. Do, do you have any thing that you would like to say to the young people that are starting to to be creative in makeup? Well, I think classes are always important. Um, I still take classes now um, where I'll watch, you know, people, other makeup artists do things because I still learn to this day. Um, so I think any class that you take will help you. Um, I always tell people take art classes. If you want to be a makeup artist, take art classes. It teaches you color theory. It teaches you light and shadow. It teaches you like you understand the body and the bone structure and the muscle structure underneath. So it helps you understand where you have to place things. Um, I think that's really important. Um, another thing is, is just keep doing it. Like if this is what you really want to do, then do it, find your friends, find your family. And even if it's just to have some fun and, you know, you have this idea in your head, you want to get out you'll get it out and then you'll learn so that if you were to come across a situation where you have to do something like that, you already have it in your head. You already know what you have to do. You've already known the mistakes that you've made. And then the final thing is just to be nice. Like so many makeup artists are not nice and have attitudes and 
Um, it's not, especially after everything that we've just gone through in the past year, um, nobody wants to work with that anymore. You know, nobody wants, wants someone who has an attitude or who causes problems on a set or on a show. You know, they want to work with people that are good at their craft, that can problem solve, and that are nice and engaging and, you know, pleasant to be around because there's already enough stress when you're putting a show together, when you're filming something, you know, you don't need to add to that stress. I forgot something very important. You yes. were nominated for an Emmy, right? I was, I was. And which show was that? Tell me about it. So that was uh, Jesus Christ Superstar Live on NBC. So it was at a really interesting point of my life. I hadn't worked in about seven months or eight months. I had okay. no money. And this is what, a few years ago? I really, I had no money in my bank account. For the first time in so long, there was nothing in my bank account. Um, and I took a job working for a study abroad company that specialized in the performing arts. And I thought, well, I'll, this is my way. I'll get out of doing makeup. Um, you know, and I, I saw some potential of like travel and, you know, which I love. And, and I was doing it and I did it for like two months. And I'm like, this is not me. I cannot be sitting behind a desk on a computer all day. I didn't know what I was going to do, but I knew I couldn't do this anymore. So I had... I knew that eventually I would be quitting this job. And when that happened, one of the um, wig designers that I work with, Chuck LaPointe, who I do a lot of shows with, randomly texted me and just said, how are things? And I was like, yeah, they're fine. You know, I'm working this job. I don't really like it. I'm miserable, but I don't know what to do. And he was like, oh, well, you should text Paul uh, Taswell, the costume designer and um, see about getting on the Donna Summer musical with us. So I was like, great. So I texted Paul and I said, hey, I heard you're doing Donna Summer. Um, if you need a makeup designer, let me know. And he said, yeah, I would love for you to do that. He's like, but there's another project that I'm doing that I really want to use you for. And I said, what? And he said, it's Jesus Christ Superstar on NBC. And I was like, yes, yes, I'll do it. I like, didn't even know anything about it. I was like, yes, I'll do it. So I got that, gave my notice at the, the job and, and came back into the makeup world. And it was amazing. The entire experience from start to finish was so much fun. Um, you could tell that everybody wanted to put on the best production. Like it came from the top down. The atmosphere was wonderful. The actors were wonderful. I had an incredible team of 15 makeup artists on this, um, some of whom I personally chose and then some of whom my, my department head chose that she knew. And we brought in a really diverse group of artists because there was a really diverse cast. And I wanted, every, I wanted the cast to be able to look around and say, okay, there's someone here who represents me. And I was also, and it was just great. I get told them what to do my makeup artist, I gave, I done face charts. I had, you know, a whole mood board set up and, and, and they did it. And it was so easy for me. I mean, there were little tweaks here and there. Um, the hardest part was designing the tattoos. So I just started thinking and I started thinking, okay, so stories about Jesus. And so I grew up Catholic. So I know the Bible, I know the stories. And I was like, well, the Trinity is really important. So why don't I try to do things in sets of three? But yeah, that was that was probably the most difficult is figuring out what to do for that. And then then also like looking at everybody and seeing what their costumes were, where what skin is exposed, like, OK, this one pretty much is covered. So we don't have to do tattoos still is like so fun and creative and, and something that I don't normally get to do. So and then I got an Emmy nomination and got to go to the Emmys that year. So. So, yeah, it, it, uh, it was amazing. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, what do you think was the most difficult thing for you during your career? Probably the most difficult thing was recognizing that I was a makeup designer and that I am talented. Um, I don't think in the beginning I had the confidence. And 
So I hired myself to work on Wicked and I worked on Wicked for seven years. I mean, I designed some other shows during that time and then did all the Wicked's around the world, but but I was so afraid to just be a makeup designer. I didn't think that I had the talent for it. And it took many, many years and doing a lot of shows and um, doing this, this program that I did um, called Evolution through the Powder Group because I was stuck. Like I just was doing the same thing over and over and over again and I couldn't get out of it. And it took that to sort of open my mind and, and to open my eyes and be like, no, you can do this and you are talented. And, you know, you, ha you have the confidence now. And I think that was the hardest lesson to learn and to just then not care. When you're doing something like this and you're working in, in a team, you're part of a whole and it's not just you. And you have to understand that. So you, ha you have to be willing to take the criticism. You have to be willing that if the costume designer or the director or one of the producers says, I don't like this and I want you to change it. Um, and, it's a, and it's a, you know, an honest opinion and not just them not understanding. Um, you have to, be willing to say, yes, okay, I will change this. Um, at the same time, you also have to be willing to, if it's something you strongly believe in that you think is an essential part of the design and that it would ruin it, you know, not to have it, then you have to be able to fight for it. I want to thank everyone for, for watching today. It's been a pleasure to be here with you, Victor. And um, I am so looking forward to things opening up again and for us to get back to some sort of normality so that I can come back down to Brazil, to Sao Paulo, um, you know, hopefully teach some more classes down there and just be able to experience the culture because I miss it a lot. <laughs>